Now the Polish pair are the fourth seeds in the competition, and the Chinese pair are the 17th seeds, but they've been on blistering form all the way through to make it all the way to the gold medal contest. First shot of the athletes today for the fans in the South Paris Arena. It has been a palace of table tennis. There are many iconic venues here in Paris 2024 that table tennis venue. All the excitement is on the inside here, the cauldron of noise that builds up as we get to gold medal contests such as we have today. Here at Poland's pair in Patrick Czernowski and Piotr Grudzian. And they make their way towards table one. So Lu and Zhao lead the way for the People's Republic of China. They may be the 17th seeds, and that's the, the bottom seed in the draw, but they, as ever, as a Chinese pair, you might expect them to be hot shots, and they really are. They've proved themselves over the course of the last couple of days. So not just being good form, but to have meshed really well as a pairing. Grudzian and Chernovsky. They've been an established pair for a while now. They won the European Championships together in Sheffield last year to underline their credentials coming into Paris. And on their way through, they've beaten the Chinese pairing in the semi-finals. And actually, the higher ranked of the Chinese pairs were downed by the Poles. They beat a uh, pair of Lian Hao and Xiao Shuai in the last encounter. So there shouldn't be uh, any fear factor Les for Poland against uh, du Zhao and Lu. That's that we see being expected. And it's uh, also a very warm welcome to my co-commentator today, John McPherson from Canada, national team coach, national team player, a Paralympian back in Sydney 2000. John, a very warm welcome to you as well. Thank you very much, Jack. I'm looking forward to this match. I think, again, you're going to see uh, a really good standard of play. These teams wouldn't be here if they weren't. You're certainly right about the Polish team. They have a long history of being extremely strong. But again, with China, you never know what comes out. We're going to have a warm-up here for about two minutes. We're talking players that are Class 9 and Class 10. Uh, both the players from uh, People's Republic of China are Class 9. Uh, we have a situation uh, with Konoski, who's a 10, and who's an 8. Anyway, the combination comes out to uh, men's doubles 18, which means you combine the two. So we have two 9s, which make 18, and on, on the Polish side, you have a 10 and an 8, which is also 18. In terms of, um, I guess, not to use the word disability, but I will at this point in time, or impairment, I guess is a more proper word, is that uh, you won't see a whole lot at this level because this is at the high end, or I guess, or the low end of a disability or uh, an impairment. It may be very difficult to tell. In some cases, you'll see it obviously, but some you won't. So sometimes it's very subtle. I don't think you'll find that out. Chinovsky. Grudzian get themselves together. Both are really experienced into their 30s these days. And the way a doubles pairing works together, the way they know each other's movement is so important as well. Here we see the confirmation of what you've just been talking about, John Zhao and Lu, both are in the nine class individually. And therefore, if our maths is right and, and we've got it right, everyone else is, is on the same page there. And that equals 18, so that's why men's doubles. 18 class, this is their route through. Just dropping two games on the way. And interestingly, they've both beaten the alternative pair from the opposite nation. So Poland beating the Chinese pair in the semi-final and this Chinese pair beating the Polish alternative pair in the draw.
Janowski in class 10 and Piotr Kutzi in class 9 as well. They dropped a game all the way through in each of their matches. So they've managed to be at the table a little bit longer than some of the matches that we've seen this Chinese pair put together. They've ripped through some of their opponents. Najee Gachem of Tunisia is a chair up. And assisted by Francis Tamara Armentalat. So, John, the, the mentality of a final, does it change? for players, is, is there an inevitable difference to how they build up to a match when they know it's the gold medal, it's the big Oh, one. I think there's there's nerves here. I think you'll find that for the first couple of points till they establish themselves, get themselves in the in the mood, right mood, you're gonna find them maybe a little tight. You may see a shot or two that you expect to make be little nerves a little bit, because you're in a big match, your biggest match. So here we go, the gold medal begins in men's doubles 18. Beginning with a snake shot from Kruzian. He picked that up from right below the table, so the Chinese pair couldn't see what spin he put on it. However, they dealt with it well, won the point. Exciting beginning. No feeling their way into this encounter. Strong attack by that Chinese player. They've come out strong. No, no, play, please. And I've noticed that they have to serve diagonally from the right hand side, and that's the only place you can start a serve in doubles. So the players know where the ball is going to start. And of course, alternate shots mandatory in exactly. doubles. Oh, absolutely. So it was played into the space nicely where the Polish pair weren't able to get to. Polish team is now on the board. Let inside and line. Ah, service warning. Three, the first time when they when they do that, it's a warning. They don't lose a point, but there was a warning in the service violation. Excellent, excellent rally. They're using the full table, and um, that was just a nice rally. direction from Chernovsky. The shape of his body almost to go down the parallel, but then he opened things up to go back on the diagonal. What a return by the Chinese player. It was a strong attack by the Polish player, and he drove the ball down the line. A brilliant shot. First pendulum serve we're seeing there from Chinovsky. Affecting additional spin, which uh, isn't read quite well enough by China. Oh, that ball was returned too high and in the middle of the table. Chinese players had options there. Right down the middle of the white line. Turn from Grudzian. Push return, but made sure that it was on the table. Oh. Oh. Uh, ex 
excellent serve now. Six. From good see a little top spin and side spin on that serve, and it did catch the player off guard a bit. Polar making sure they don't let their opponents go down the road too quickly early on. Teed up nicely, third ball attack and a well-planned point. Basically the same serve too. He, he got a good advantage on the first time he served, so he went right back to it again. You're only playing to 11 points, so you take whatever advantage you can get. of Chole from Zhao and Lu. What a brilliant rally. The Chinese have set themselves up so well to finish the point. Pulled the players out of position, but they could not finish the point. Another service violation. But again, a warning. That was an attack rally right from the beginning, right after the serve, an attack, and they sustained to both teams until one broke through. That was well done. That's high level table tennis. One of Chinovsky's serves has been dealt with. And again, the second turns into points for China. They take two of their opponent's serves. That is a big advantage in table tennis, like any other racket sport. Service possession is really important. Again, that push from Grudzian down the parallel, which causes problems. Oh, this is interesting. It hit the net, and the Chinese players claiming the ball hit the table afterwards. The edge ball can sometimes be so subtle. Yes. It just takes a, a very sh small clip. The flight of the ball doesn't necessarily deviate. That's their point. At this case, they're, uh, they're claiming, um, the umpire's claiming that the ball did not touch. It's a very crucial point. They want to get it right, the umpire. Play, please. Told to put it behind them. And they need to put it behind them. Yes, they do. Can't afford to carry grievances from the previous point into no, your next one. Absolutely not. You must play the ball that's present to you at this time. I, I'm sure it's not that. Okay. And when you see it down there, there seems to be a deviation in flight. Ever so subtle. Nine, eight. They just showed the replay to the crowd. Not sure who the coach is talking to. It could be the head referee or the assistant referee claiming that they did not get a point they should have had. Which, by looking at the replay, is legit. The umpire is not going to change his mind. The referee can overrule. This delay will definitely favor the Polish team. No, no. No, no, uh, I'm sure. I'm sure he doesn't see it. Nine, eight. We stay as we are. And China with a, a single point advantage. Wait, please. Yellow card, I think he just figures the coach was too aggressive. 
but he's defending his players. Moment, please. Nine, eight. So back to it. Oh! Hitting the net and Poland level things up. So neither serve from the Chinese pair was won by them. It's all going against serve at the moment. Yes, and that's unusual. Serve from Grudzian, who was the last player around the table to win his own serve. And he'll have two of them as well. That might be all Poland need for the first game. That's a risky shot. It's makeable, it's a, it's a top spin. Side spin attack shot, but he went to a very small part of the table. High risk. But again, high reward if you're successful. Game point for Poland's Grudzian and Czernowski. Grudzian to serve. That's a lovely return. Exactly the same return. He missed it the first time, but he went right back to it. That is gutsy, because that was game point. Chinese really needed that psychologically. So you have to be two ahead to win the game. That's correct. And what happens at 10 10? You, you alternate serve until somebody wins by two. Just tried to shape that over. Actually, struck it below the line of the table as well to disguise what spin was on it, but there just wasn't enough lift. Game point for China. Oh, down the Brilliant line. Brilliant backhand strike. It was brilliant, wasn't it, John? It certainly was. No one was getting that ball. Brilliant and brazen, given the scenario. Game point saved on both sides of the table. Table return. Patrick Chernovsky with a classy stroke from deep behind the baseline. Got the crowd into it. They love this. He's well off the table here. And his partner basically made a defensive return because that's all he could do. But he finished it off. Can they ride that point into converting a game point? Chernovsky lines it up, it's the third ball attack. It goes to plan for Poland, and they take the first game in the gold medal contest. Excellent. That game could set up the whole match because of that uh, disputed call and the fact that in the end, the Polish team took the advantage of that and finished the game off. It'd be very interesting to see how the Chinese team comes out now and uh, gets himself mentally back into it. Because that's going to be something that's going to really stay with them. Hopefully the coach will not even bring it up. And a good coach in this kind of intensity will only give one, possibly two suggestions. It's processing these things in milliseconds is difficult. Well, the freeze is here. The game's mascot to get everyone going. The volunteers doing likewise. But now the sport has begun. It is a fantastic first game. Absolutely. Next three or four points, very, very crucial psychologically for the Chinese team because they're still thinking about it. We'll see that after a, a first game, which, which game. takes a lot out of two teams. Sometimes the team that has won it takes it a bit of time to get going in the second game. Let's see how Poland fared. Janowski crushed that ball with his backhand. 
That, that's his go-to shot. Not showing any signs of uh, leaving his head in the last game, is he? No, not at all. Fault. One all. Called a service fault. Not, not, not vertical. This is the first time yep. for you. Now, what he means by vertical, yes, if I may speak over the umpire for a second, you is that he, did, he drew the ball away up towards his body instead of directly straight up. And, of course, it has to be 16 millimeters or more out of your palm. So that's a point for China. That's a little bit of an advantage there for them. They were hoping it would just be a warning because last time it was Chinovsky that was warned, this time Grunzian, but it's one warning per team. I think so. But that's not standard. That's up to the umpire. He can, he can fault you right away if he wishes. Most will give you a little bit of leeway before they would do that, because they don't wish to see points won that way. Janowski decided to take uh, things into his own hands. That was ball was driven right towards the middle. I think uh, jammed the player a bit, and um, consequently the ball went off the side. But again, it was because of the position of the ball. called a wing-to-wing -wing shot. One side, then off to the other side. Nice rally. That's one of the few points I've seen missed, actually. And I think that Lu and Zhao will really want to get win the next couple points. They want to stay in this game, and they need this game, psychologically, even though it is best three of five. It's the first time they've, they've lost the first game of their match is here in Paris. They have lost uh, games before, but only after having taken the first one. So it's a, a new position they find themselves in at these Paralympic Games. To the floor to try and retrieve it, but still not quite from Chernovsky. Too high, and then options for the players too. Oh, the first towel down we've had this uh, this uh, session actually, and uh, you're allowed to do that at every six point intervals, and um, as you can see, twelve. So there's a time there. You can also talk to your your partner a little bit psychologically, or you can just slow things down. Good retrieve from Grudzian off the side. Covered the ground well. Five, nine. 
And, John, when we see a shot like that goes in the net from a serve, we can't see the spin on the ball, but will it be because there is something on there that the opponent hasn't been able to see, and that's why it's gone in the net? Certainly possibly, or they just didn't uh, react quick enough. Again, because in doubles, the service comes a certain area on the table. And uh, the spins are, I mean, there's only four spins to speak of. There's no spin, top spin, back spin, and side spin. Or combinations, of course. And Poland have accelerated through this second game now. Five game points. And a, a, a touch play, which he was looking to go long with. Just drifting off the side. So one of the five saved by China. But now Poland on serve. And this means a third ball attack is going to be set up for Patrick Czernowski. Ten, seven. Not vertical. Another fault. Backwards, not upwards. Ten, seven. Two of these service points in the game now have been essentially freebies. For China. Pretty much, but if you noticed, he drew the ball back. It didn't go straight up. He let it go a little bit. He drew the ball back. That actually was a very good call for the umpire. Good call, cool, but pressure on Poland. And Chernovsky wasn't able to get his attack going. He was jammed in. It's really good returning from China. It's excellent. They're taking advantage of maybe a bit of a soft point on a service fault, but. You know what? This is their chance right here. Timeout called, and <laughs> we could have pressed the button for timeout ourselves. Yes, here, we John. could have. Yes, we could have. That was always going to come in. And the timeout has been called by Poland, and um, I just don't. I think they just don't want to um, lose this opportunity they have, and they definitely have a unique, great opportunity. So we'll see what happens. Coach is making a good decision. You know, they've lost a few points in a row, and that soft point in the service fault. But coach said, hey, calm down. We're in control of the match. Nothing to worry about. Stay focused. And John, in timeouts like such as this, do you make specific plans for the very next point, or is it more general advice? It all depends on the situation. Both those are accurate. It could be a specific type of return you want to make off of a serve, or a certain particular serve you want to make, or it could just be the situation breathe. Poland still with two points to take the game. And Czernowski. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. That is such a nice shot. He was able to attack it because it came off the end. You can attack shorter balls using a lot more wrist, but that ball came off the end and he ripped it. Czernowski seals the deal for game number two. 13-11, 11-8. And after the comeback that we saw from China within the game, sealing that one delivers healthy psychological boost to Poland's chances. They go two games to love up. Game number three, and China okay. to serve. Two love down. To serve. The Chinese pair of Lu and Zhao. They are the 17th seed, which is the lowest seeding in men's doubles 18, up against the fourth seeds of Poland. 
but we never read too much into seedings when it comes to Chinese pairs because they can take two people from a training hall, put them together, and they'll form a world-beating partnership quite often. Lovely spin coming in to Chinovsky from the return. Nice drive. Oh, edge ball. It was an edge ball. But the setup from Poland when Grudzian is serving seems to follow a, a, quite a similar pattern. Yes, it does. A free ball, as you said before. Sir, return attack. Try to get Chinovsky unleashing his forehand. It's a situation where the Polish team was backed off the table a bit by the aggressive shots of the Chinese team. They, were, they pulled them off the table a bit, which makes it more difficult for sure. Yeah, one of those where you check the racket afterwards. What happened there? Timeout has just been called. It's time, of course, for the Chinese team. You only get one timeout per match. So they're taking theirs now. Well, they're in a situation. They're down 2-0. They have to consider this is the right time. The coach has to keep his players motivated. I just sense by the body language that they're still upset by the first game. And those teams stay with players, having played, you know, you look at it going like, my goodness, we're cheated out of a point, they think. And, uh, and they just think that that game is almost taken away from them, which it sports those things happen. But the, a good coach say, hey, we're still in this game. You're still in the match. Don't panic. So this coach obviously seeing what you've seen, John, because to, to use a timeout at this point in the game, when you could use it to stifle momentum when things are on game point later on, but he's obviously seen something that needs correcting. Well, the player's leaving the field of play. Well, this may be part of it. So you can't do that unless uh, the referee gives permission. It could be a bathroom break, but they're not standard necessarily. I don't think it's an injury. I'm not sure exactly why he's going, but he would have to be granted permission or it would have been a red card. I think go over to the referee to, to have a conversation. So permission obviously given. Thanks. To be honest, I don't know what's going on. It looks like they're changing shirts. You can't do that. In my opinion, anyway, you just can't walk. He's taking an extra shirt with him. I'm not sure what's going on, but in my experience, so possibly not a bathroom bag at all, but a, a change of shirt. It appears to be a change of shirt, which again, I'm not entirely sure why that would be granted. A referee or assistant referee going back up to the control area. Well, there's a uh, confused faces all round. But Poland's Grudzian and Chernovsky making the statement that they're ready as soon as both Chinese players are back at the table. Yeah. They don't want to delay any further. 
it seems to me to be a tactic. Slow the match down, throw off the Polish team. Again, perhaps not, it could be something legitimate, but this is unusual as far as I'm concerned. Well, John, you've certainly uh, built up the hours table side through your coaching career, playing career for the Canada national team. So if something surprising to you, it's a rare occurrence indeed. But back to it we go. Three, four. Let's remind ourselves of the score as well. We're at three, four. Poland a point down in the third game, having won the first two. What a rally. By far the best rally of the entire match up to now. And that's a statement by the Polish team. If you guys want to play games with us psychologically, we're going to come and show you what we can do on the table. Making up for lost time, aren't they, in the entertainment stakes? Patrick Chinovsky with the coldest stare in Paris. But every time it's a statement. This time even more so. Strong back end. The push was well read. Yes, it was well read. You come up over and just use top spin and a drive right through the ball. Very efficient. What a heavy clip of the net that took to carry all the way over. So danger bells ringing again because Grudzian on serve to try and set this up for Janowski. And the pressure is there to then deliver Exactly. A super return. Yes, he didn't want to allow him to attack. And you can't do that every time. Again, a very high risk shot, but he didn't want to get attacked from the third ball. Poland winning points right now on their reputation. That's a good return. That really is. It had not only some spin on it, but it had pace. There it goes. That's. Right through. Zhao to serve. Seven, six. What happened there, that ball went down the middle. And the middle is a hard, sometimes a very difficult place to play a ball and return a ball. You can get jammed quite easily. You're not moving quickly. There's so less space around the table in doubles than in singles. Oh! Might sound obvious to say that, but uh, nonetheless, it plays a part. It's a dual threat when it's Patrick Chinovsky, that forehand, but also the backhand. Yeah. Well, Chinovsky is definitely the power player. He's the one, the go-to guy. That's who you want to get. Again, it takes two to play. But they have him there to finish the point. They are a well-practiced duo. And it's in the heat of such moments where they seamlessly shift in and out of each other's spaces to make exactly the right occasion to finish points off like that. All the training in the sports hall in Poland, back in their clubs, pays off. Oh. Now, was that spin or was that 
just a missed shot. There was something on it that was funny, I think. thing, his body position, he was out of position with his body bit. He could have stepped over one more step and then been more free to hit. It could have been spin driven, it's possible. Putin has delivered plenty of those kind of unreadable shots in this encounter, and this has brought up three gold medal winning points. They've done it. Chernovsky and Grudzian for Poland win the gold medal. It was a blistering performance from start to finish. And once they hit the front at the end of the first game, there was no stopping them. It's gold for Poland in men's doubles. They won the European Championships together last year in Sheffield. They've come over to France and they've lifted the Paralympic title. 13-11, that was the key game. Once they got that after the different scenarios we saw, the frustrations of the Chinese at what they thought was a point they should have had. But Poland's kicked on and kept the pressure up. As fine a gold medal contest as you could hope for a Polish duo to come out and take on the Chinese in that way. The number four seeds finish as top of the pops. It's an excellent match. So much psychology involved in this particular match as well. And I think that does blend in to, to individual sports. And such individual caliber from these two through the years, they, particularly with Patrick Chernovsky. Chernovsky, a uh, singles champion in Rio, in London, and in Tokyo. But in doubles, there hasn't been that caliber, that CV to point to. Only in recent years has doubles become something that these two have really uh, come together and excelled at as a pair I'm talking about but what a mix that they are on the table irresistible eventually at the end the uh, cold stare turns to a smile yeah, he might have found that difficult, but I don't think so. He's just so intense. They're both intense. All four are intense. But it's a way of smiling internally. It's uh, it's the way he does it, and it's theatrical and imposing for your opponents. Piotr Grudzian, 32 years of age now, if we rewind the clock in his career, he, he won a silver medal in Beijing, John, when he was just 16 years of age. He was a wild card then and he faced China's Chen Gung in the gold medal contest. That was the last time he was in a Paralympic final facing a Chinese opponent, and all those years later, he now comes out with the gold medal. And also worth bearing in mind that he uh, idolizes the Swedish table tennis legend Jan Ove Voldner. That's his hero. Who doesn't in many ways? But uh, there were touches, certainly, from Grudzian which have been borrowed from the Voldner playbook. The unpredictability and the spinning shots and disguise as well around some of his play.